Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here, uh, for making the trek on a rainy day. Um, but so excited uh, to be here and to MC uh, today's events. So my name is Hannah Storm. I work at ESPN on a show called Sports Center Face to Face and cover uh, many big events, uh, such as Major League Baseball's trip to Cuba last year and uh, just wrapped a Major League Baseball special as well. And I just want to say, um, been associated with the Jackie Robinson Foundation for many, many years, and I'm very, very honored to be here today among all of you. Today, the Jackie Robinson Foundation breaks ground on a permanent tribute to an icon, the great Jackie Robinson, a man whose heroism began in the confines of Ebbets Field, as you know, but whose crusade for racial and social equality has forever transformed the landscape of our great country. A man whose monumental achievements continue to inspire the world and to bring people together as we are here today. And I now have the delightful task of publicly announcing at the outset the founding donors of the Jackie Robinson Museum, whose very generous early gifts have brought us to today's extremely exciting event. Nike Inc. and Phil Knight, the Yawkey Foundation, the City of New York, Joseph J. Plumeri, the New York Mets, City, Strata Education Network, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Major League Baseball, the New York Yankees, Stephen Ross, and the Tull Family Foundation. Let's give these individuals, companies, and organizations a big round of applause. You guys are great. You started applauding before I even asked. I love it. And now please direct your attention to the screen for a brief overview of the incredible history that brought us all here today. The weight of the entire race was on his shoulders. People aren't going to like this going to do anything to get you to react. Every advancement in society has come from people standing on the shoulders of giants. And in the history of baseball, in the history of our country, few people have stood taller than Jackie Robbins. The only thing that we are demanding is that we be allowed to move ahead just like any other American citizen. Our family had always had special value for education. We know that education is the key to a better life. The hands-on care of this program had a life-changing impact on me. And it is the reason that I and many of my fellow JRF alums continue to be very involved in the Jackie Robinson Foundation. But it's not just about Jack. It's really about the social change that came about once he succeeded in what he was doing. We also think it will uh, further our primary mission of educating the public about not just Jackie the man, but what Jackie stood for um, as a, a great American who opened the floodgates to the modern civil rights movement. It's important that we remember every day that the cause of social justice and equality is an everyday battle. Jackie gave a lot of us hope, and we want to continue to give our society hope. That just gives me chills. Um, and now we'll hear from a woman who has advanced the mission of the Jackie Robinson Foundation in such extraordinary ways. And I can say, as a parent, I am so grateful to her and those in the foundation for the education that they continue to sponsor for our young people. Uh, she has led its scholarship program through tremendous growth and ensured the success of the campaign 
for this museum. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the dynamic president and CEO of the Jackie Robinson Foundation, Della Britton Baeza. Thanks. You're the best. Oh, uh, so are you. Thank you, Hannah. And she was actually very accurate in saying she's been a longtime supporter of the foundation. Hannah Storm actually emceed the very first event uh, I did with the Jackie Robinson Foundation as its new president. I won't say uh, how long ago it was, but it was quite a while, over a decade. And so it's nice to rejoin you here today. You know, I want to tell you what a magical moment this is for us at the Jackie Robinson Foundation, and I would especially like to celebrate the tremendous dedication of our board of directors, our donors, our very generous donors, I might add, the incredible JRF staff, uh, miracle workers, each one of them. We are a small staff, and I'm always amazed at what they're able to do. We also are indebted to all of our friends who have been advocates, who have helped us through this journey, all of whom, are, of course, are helping us make the Jackie Robinson Museum a reality. Allow me to begin by recognizing the woman whose vision and impact have reverberated throughout this foundation, someone who appreciates how important this legacy is, not just for the man, but for what he did for society because she was right there next to him. Our entire society owes both her and Jackie Robinson a tremendous debt. Please join me in thanking and applauding our guiding light, the founder of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. We like to call her, I hope that's okay, Rob, the first lady of baseball, Mrs. Rachel Robinson. And we are very fortunate as well to have both Sharon Robinson and David Robinson, the daughter and son of Jackie and Rachel, very much engaged in the foundation. They have been on the board of directors since uh, pretty much uh, since its inception, um, if not in spirit. Certainly as adults, they have been members. And Sharon Robinson is also with us today. David's gone back to Tanzania. But Sharon, will you please stand and let us recognize you? And because this is such a proud family legacy, I'd like to ask the grandchildren who are here, and I've seen, I think I saw four of them, would you please stand up and be recognized? They're our future. And of course, you saw him in the video. I'm pleased to extend a heartfelt thank you to our brilliant chairman of the board, as a Jackie Robinson Foundation alumnus, he has reached the heights of success, the ones that we imagine for all of our Jackie Robinson scholars. He has stayed in the fold as a generous contributor and now as chairman of the board and hopefully to lead the foundation through its next 50 years of impact, Mr. Greg Gonzalez. So now that you have all seen how young Greg is, I want you to also know he is a retired managing director and partner of Goldman Sachs and actually is now a managing director, at, uh, an, advisor, an advisory partner at Integrated Capital, as young as he is. I also want to um, recognize Greg's predecessor for 18 years as the foundation's extraordinary board chair. The venerable Len Coleman, former president of the National League, base, baseball's National League. Len, will you please stand up and be recognized? Len, you and I were there at the beginning of this project, going out and raising our flag, and so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that we're here today. And I'd like to have the entire board of directors of the Jackie Robinson Foundation please stand and be recognized, and we've got a great board. Some are over here, some are over on this side. And if you'll indulge me just uh, uh, briefly uh, um, again, I, I, all that has been done and accomplished in this organization over the last 20 years is due in great part to the foundation's tremendously talented, devoted, and just plain brilliant chief operating officer, Latanya Johnson. I'm going to pay for this, I know, but affectionately known as LJ, I want to recognize our COO, who, without whom nothing in this organization would get done. I think she's up here. She's not going to step out. But remember those two initials, LJ. So 44 years ago, 
A year after Jackie Robinson's death in 1972, Rachel Robinson established the Jackie Robinson Foundation to perpetuate the legacy of her husband by promoting and supporting higher education as a means to ensure equal opportunity for all. The approach of the Foundation's celebrated college scholarship program that uniquely provides both generous financial aid and four years of comprehensive support services that lead to a consistent nearly 100% college graduation rate among the Jackie Robinson Foundation scholars as well as the graduate fellows. And I know we have some in the audience today. I hope you'll get a chance to chat with them. Over 10 years ago, and through a challenging economic environment, the Foundation undertook this project to extend the vision of education and humanitarianism to the general public, to continue to promote those values embodied in the life of Jackie Robinson, just as we have done with the Jackie Robinson Foundation scholars. The Jackie Robinson Museum, a fixed permanent tribute to Jackie Robinson, will educate its visitors about the rich legacy of leadership, courage, and compassion displayed both on and off the field that Jackie Robinson left our society. And we are confident of the ability of our team of experts to bring life to this vision. And I'd like to just mention our incredible consulting team, internationally renowned Gensler architectural firm um, in the form of Maddie Burke, who's here with us today. Ralph Applebaum Associates is our exhibit designer. And Ralph is also here today. Notably, Ralph Applebaum also designed the Smithsonian's, the Smithsonian's National African American Museum of History and Culture. He was the exhibit designer there, and he has been retained by President Obama for his library in Chicago. So we're in very, uh, as they say, high cotton here today. I also want to recognize, I also want to recognize Zubatkin Associates, who has been our steady-handed project manager who keep us on track and on budget, certainly with the leadership of the very able Andy Bast. So we have a great team that we know is going to accomplish this project. In the words of Rachel Robinson herself, the Jackie Robinson Museum will be more than a shrine to Jackie Robinson. It will tell Jackie's story as a gifted athlete and pioneering major leaguer who sacrificed and worked to unite a divided country beginning in the 1940s. But it will also portray the other facets of Jackie Robinson, the thought leader who dared to take unpopular positions, the advisor to a New York governor and at least one United States president, the devoted husband and father, the entrepreneur, the broadcaster, the corporate executive, and the committed activist for social justice and equal opportunity who was dubbed by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as a freedom rider before freedom rides, indeed a sitter-in before sit-ins. And so in addition to showcasing Jackie's role in America's greatest pastime, the museum will host programs where social issues, which were important to Jackie Robinson and to Rachel Robinson and their family, and which still plague our society. They will all be candidly addressed, and visitors will be challenged to be their best selves, to practice compassion and empathy toward each other, all in the spirit of Jackie Robinson. There are many tributes to Jackie Robinson around the country and even internationally. There are athletic fields, community centers, schools, highways, special awards, and of course, many impressive statues. Unveiled recently, a sensational one outside of Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. But this tribute in the form of a fixed gathering place will work to tell Jackie Robinson's whole story and will serve as a vibrant venue that will educate and inspire with a robust online component as well. And it will be a destination for school children of all ages to engage in innovative programming that not only teaches, but that builds character. So with that, I would just like to remind the audience, and all those who are listening on our stream, or on the website, that while we have met our fundraising goal to construct the museum, our campaign is not over. We must raise an additional $18 million, having raised $25 million, to put in place even a modest endowment to fund operating costs once the museum opens. So please, all of you who contact us with your wonderful memories and stories about our namesake, we are calling on you to help us raise the funds needed to completely realize and sustain an institution that will add richly to the cultural landscape of our country. 
And I extend, once again, a very special thank you to our generous founding donors. Um, many more can join that group, and we hope you do. But now I do have the unfortunate announcement of uh, the mayor of New York was expecting to be with us today, planned it for many weeks, and perhaps um, as well as all of us New Yorkers, many around the country are mourning the loss of one of our fallen firefighters. And so the mayor is in Bethpage, New York, at that fallen hero's funeral. But he is, in fact, a stalwart supporter of this project. He helped us secure the help of the city, and he was able to send along a recorded message, which I am now pleased to introduce. So I thank you all for coming, and if you'll turn your attention to the videotape, to the screen, you will hear from the mayor of New York. Thank you. This is Bill de Blasio. I'm a lifelong baseball fan, a sometime little league coach, a decidedly amateur first baseman, and I'm also the mayor of New York City. Seventy years ago, in the borough of Brooklyn, an American hero finally got the chance he deserved to play Major League Baseball. On that day, Jackie Robinson, playing first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers, made a clear demand. It was time for America to live up to its most basic promise of equality for all. New Yorkers today are proud that Jackie Robinson's legacy is intertwined with our city's history. This is a place where so many of Major League Baseball's iconic moments have played out. The shot heard around the world, the catch, Lou Gehrig's farewell speech. But all of that pales in comparison to what happened at Ebbets Field on April 15, 1947. Everyone knows that part of the story. But we can never forget what you achieved, Rachel. None of what Jackie did would have been possible without you. I know I feel the same way about my partnership with our First Lady, Shirley McRae. Rachel, all of us thank you for dedicating your life to the cause of justice and for carrying on that mission after Jackie's death. On behalf of eight and a half million New Yorkers, I want to offer my congratulations and thanks to you, to your family, to the Jackie Robinson Foundation, and all who work to make this day possible. This is a joyous moment in the city of New York as you break ground on the Jackie Robinson Museum. I'm proud that our administration has worked with you and the foundation to help bring us to this day. This museum will educate, inspire, and challenge future generations to uphold the values that both you and Jackie embody. The Jackie Robinson Museum will be a jewel in New York City's cultural life for generations to come. To you, Rachel, what you and Jackie accomplished here helped define New York City as a place for everyone. He may have been born in Georgia and raised in California, but Jackie will always be one of us a true New Yorker. Thank you. Very nice. Very nicely done. And thank you, Della, for your incredible words. And uh, very nice of the mayor to send along a tribute both to Mrs. Robinson and to this important endeavor. Uh, you can hear the excitement in everyone's voices about this living, breathing, testament to Jackie Robinson and almost imagine the kids uh, who will come here one day and be impacted by their visits here. And now we're going to hear from a leader who has masterfully addressed Major League Baseball's economic uh, governance and policy issues for decades, tasked now with leading the great American pastime into its next chapter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me with a warm welcome for the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Mr. Robert Manfred. Thanks, Sandra. Good morning, everyone. I uh, can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be here for this long anticipated groundbreaking on a permanent memorial here in New York City for Jackie Robinson. I want to congratulate Rachel, Sharon, Della Britton Baeza, the entire Jackie Robinson Foundation on bringing this project to fruition and bringing it to life. Major League Baseball is really proud to have contributed to this project, but quite frankly, we're even prouder of our long relationship with the Jackie Robinson Foundation, our relationship with the 30 JRF uh, uh, scholars that Major League Baseball and its clubs support, 
and our relationship with the Breaking Barriers program, which is, the, of course, the brainchild of my friend Sharon Robinson. Every year on April 15th, baseball pauses to honor the legacy of Jackie Robinson. We undertake this unique celebration because Jackie's breaking of the color barrier is literally the greatest moment in the history of baseball. It is the greatest moment because Jackie took our game beyond sport and injected it, made it a part of a movement that literally began a process of change in America that is still ongoing today. The best thing about Jackie Robinson Day each year is it forces baseball to pause, think about what it's accomplished, and even more important, focus on the work that we all still have to do. Finally, I can't leave here without saying a word about the wonderful woman who stood at Jackie Robinson's side as he made history. Rachel has a unique grace and presence, coupled with her long and tireless work to preserve and enhance Jackie's legacy, it has made Rachel literally an American treasure. There's a lot of great things about being the commissioner of baseball. One of the very best is to have an opportunity to work with a great woman, Rachel Robinson. So Rachel, thank you. And we look forward to being your partner for a very long time. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Manfred, and how beautifully said, and how exciting that Major League Baseball, continuing under your leadership, acknowledges more than 60 years after Jackie Robinson's last game, all that he meant. It's now my honor to introduce a man who has contributed his time, his passion, his enthusiasm to bringing this very special place, this museum, to life. A renowned leader in the insurance and banking industries, heading companies within Citigroup and Willis Group Holdings, and currently Vice Chairman of the First State of Board of Directors, please welcome one of the founding sponsors of the Jackie Robinson Museum and Chairman of the Jackie Robinson Museum's National Legacy Campaign, Mr. Joseph J. Plumeri. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. This is a great day. Um, I, I, I know everyone has acknowledged Rachel. Um, I, I would be remiss if I did not uh, acknowledge you myself. I remember a few years ago when you came to visit me and you talked about being campaign chair for this and your vision and your passion so that Jackie's life could live. And I was so moved by what you said, and I remember that day like it was yesterday. Congratulations on today, and thank you for visiting me and getting me involved in such a great cause. Thank you. I, I want to also acknowledge, I know there's a lot of acknowledgments, but I would feel bad if I didn't do this. I want to acknowledge uh, Della, uh, who's uh, done a lot of work. She, I, every time you say Della, she goes, uh, um, don't do that. Everybody understands um, to, and acknowledges the work that you've done so you belong, you know, in, in, in a level uh, that's different than the rest of us because your passion and your drive has brought us here as well. Della, another round of applause. I want to, uh, for those of you who've heard me speak before, this is not going to be long. Relax. Um, I think I think it's important, I think arguably, the Civil Rights Movement began with Jackie Robinson in 1947. And it began here in New York City, but there is no monument, there is no reflection uh, of having done that in New York, and I think it's altogether proper, uh, and it's fitting that this be a monument to, I think, arguably, the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement in 1947, and that's why it should be in New York City. Look, everybody's been at a museum. I've been in a lot of museums. Uh, some of them are cool. Um, some of them are not so cool. Uh, a lot of museums uh, are about stuff that happened. And um, 
that could be unexciting. Um, uh, when you do that, you leave and say, those people were good people, they made nice things. Um, in this particular case, um, this is a museum that will show artifacts uh, of Jackie Robinson. It, they will show baseballs and, and, and things that you could see. But I think more importantly, it is a living and breathing monument to what a man stood for which is just as relevant today as it was in 1947. I think what this museum will teach us, a sense of imagination, a sense of vision that Jackie Robinson had to become the first African-American baseball player in the major leagues, and to be able to forge a path for people that we're going to follow him. What a wonderful vision to have. What a great sense of imagination that you could only get by a, a showing up at a place like that and feeling the feeling he had. And if we need anything today, we need a sense of imagination. We need a sense of vision for where our country is going. So this museum is far beyond things. It's about feelings and where we're going as a country embodied in a man. I think it also gives us a sense of the commitment the guy had. Commitment today is one of those things that lasts until adversity shows up. Um, I'm committed, but I ran into a little adversity, so I think I'll go to plan B. He had a commitment to stay with it, even though there was a lot of adversity. He had a commitment to be able to stay with it so he knew that he represented the future of baseball and diversification in baseball. And no matter the taunts, no matter what he endured, he stayed committed. Something that we all need to learn because we live in a society today, if it doesn't work, then we go to plan B or plan A and embodied in this museum will be reminded of that. He certainly had purpose. He had purpose and his purpose was to show that he should be included included in a game because he thought he was as good, if not better, than everybody else. And by virtue of his inclusion, the game was better. The team was better. And if we use that as a metaphor, inclusion will make this country better. I, I got to tell you, I remember, you know, trying to be Jackie Robinson. I, I remember as a kid watching Jackie Robinson. I remember I was four years old when he stole third base uh, in 1947. I was 12 years old when he stole, third uh, stole home plate against the Yankees in 1955. I'm a Yankee fan. I still think he was safe. <laughs> I want you to know, in those days, I was a pudgy little Italian, and he made me try to steal home plate. Those are the role models that you want. Inclusion is important in this country. Inclusion that didn't happen then is still an issue today. The inclusion is necessary because all of us together is important. None of us are as good as all of us, and this museum will exemplify that. And finally, the passion that he exuded, the passion that he showed us, is something all of us could live by. We're in an age of technology. We're in an age of pushing buttons and delete buttons and send buttons. I'll tell you one thing that you can't write a software program, and that's passion, and that's character, and that's commitment, and that's imagination. You walk in here, you're going to feel all that, and you're going to walk out a better person and make a better contribution to our society. This is a great day for New York. It's a great day for our country. It's a great day for everybody. I'm proud to be included. God bless you. Thank you. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. It was beautiful to hear the passion of Joseph uh, so eloquently summarizing why we're here today. And I would add also the tenets of education uh, to that and inspiration, because that is also what this building will provide. So I'd like to invite 
Everyone that you've been hearing about today, everyone at the epicenter of the creation and the realization of this dream. So Rachel and Sharon Robinson and Greg Gonzalez and Leonard Coleman, Joe Della. So all, let's get, they're getting their hard hats. Uh, they're getting their shovels. I would like to invite all of you that are taking pictures to please come up here uh, to the front. We're gonna break down this set and we're gonna break ground on the Jackie Robinson Museum. So what an incredible moment, a realization of this dream, all this hard work. <laughs>